So, of course, I'm Helen, the Dynamic Dipper from Morecambe Bay, and today we have the great pleasure of speaking to Adam Walker. So, um, hello, Adam. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, you all right? I'm very well, very well. Oh. It's, it's good news that we can swim very soon, all of us together again, so that's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Um, for some people, for some of the viewers that don't know who you are, some of the swimmers, although I doubt not many, you know, not many will know, will not know, but um, can you just introduce yourself and what your achievements are in terms of swimming? Yeah, sure. So I'm the first British person to swim Ocean Seven, which is classed as the toughest seven ocean swims in the world, the equivalent of the seven summits. Um, and I got inspired 2007 by filming an aeroplane to swim the English Channel and then ended up doing six more channels and, uh, yeah, changed my life as a result. Uh, and, and in what way would you say, what's the biggest thing that it's been in terms of change of your life? What's the big, I mean, I know that there was a change of career, obviously, but in terms of mental mindset, what do you think is the, um, is the biggest change in terms of your swimming? Oh, massive. I mean, I just learned to how, well, how to overcome discomfort, really. That was the biggest thing. And, and I thought it was all about swimming, but then you learn from the swimming and you bring it into your everyday life. So I know I've always been pretty stubborn and competitive, but that doesn't mean that it ticks all the boxes for open water swimming, because obviously you've got temperature and you've got marine life and you've got deeper ocean and all the things that people uh, worry about. But actually understanding Adam uh, was a big thing understanding who I am as a person when I was out there training and and it's just training and you're swimming for six hours and you're thinking oh am I going to last and you know trying to combat the the temperature nerves and all the rest of it so actually understanding how to control my thoughts be positive and understand that while you're thinking positive you can't think negative and all these other things that I do while you're thinking you're warm you can't be thinking you're not warm and uh, and all those things so yeah I've got a lot to be grateful for finding this sport because actually in my personal life and, and business life it's made me um, a different person I, I think just just that kind of no fear go for it and uh, and go for your dreams yeah fant absolutely fantastic from that you've developed you you coach people um uh, that's your that's one of your um, roles now in your job and um, so how did that come about that you started um, a coaching business for swimming? It came by default really because what happened was I swam the English Channel with a, a bit of a dodgy technique just kind of all arms blasting through the water and quite early on into my training having watched the movie and got inspired to swim the English Channel I went to a pool and started building up from there but I, I had a sore shoulder I took a saving water polo um, a, a few months before that and gradually the more distance I got I got more and more pain saw a hypnotherapist managed to kind of part the pain for the English Channel which was 18 months later but I knew that was really going to be it and and the surgeon told me that basically give up the swimming because it's just too bad had a couple of operations and but I thought actually every sport I've done, I've played a lot of cricket and other sports and I always had to give them up because of injuries. Um, I used to be a fairly quick runner as a kid, had to give that up, played cricket to a relatively high standard under 19 to Nottinghamshire for my county and then, you know, had to give that up. So this was sort of the final sport really left that I thought I could always swim without any injury. And now I've got a shoulder problem as well. But uh, I, 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 did the English Channel, I wanted that marker. But then when I was advised to give up, I thought, okay, for once in your life, Adam, try and do something technically right in sport, not all brute strength and power and you know finesse. So I started really learning to swim again. So looking at the body, looking at the science behind the body and how it moves through the water, looking at other sports like golf, which is hips and boxing, which is hips. And, and, and really I modeled it on kayaking, which was a uh, core movement. You put the paddle in and you move your hips back. And I thought, well, if you do that in kayaking, why can't we do the same movement in swimming? And that principle of swimming side to side, uh, I knew would take pressure off my shoulder. And that's what I did it for. I thought I'd be a slower swimmer as a result, but the opposite, I got faster with it. Um, and it meant that I could continue swimming long distance with less effort and, and all these things. So it was great. And then I decided, well, I'll not only will I, I wanted to swim from Spain to Morocco. That was the goal. And then something in my head said, well, it's half the distance, the English Channel. 
no British person ever swam there and back. So I thought, let's take that on. And with my new technique, maybe I can achieve this. So I was a little bit naive, a little bit blasé, I suppose, not looking at the detail of why it was so difficult to go both ways. And I didn't realise it was twice as long and, let, and stronger tide and you had to be so fast one way in order to swim back. But, um, but I kind of backed this new technique. And, and as I say, it got me across these different swims. But regarding the coaching, really, it was the fifth channel swim where people started to notice me swim. I kept quite a low profile, really. I wasn't on social media for four channel swims. And I got invited to... I invited to this swim for peace in Tunisia and there was some top swimmers there and they started asking me, how do I swim like this? And my good friend, Keith um, Bartolo in Malta, who was the assistant Olympic coach of the Malta team. And he said, you know, show me how to do this. This is, this is really different from what I taught for 20 years. So then from that, I thought, well, if people are interested, maybe I should do a small group and, and coach back home. And I've always coached on and off sort of part-time over the years I had a full-time job selling appliances that was my, my normal job um, but I thought I always liked the idea of of working and doing something I was really passionate about and so I thought oh, well I'll, I'll coach half a dozen and did that and then did another group and then I thought I really enjoy this really I'm really passionate about it and then I decided which was probably eight months to a year after that time in Tunisia that I would just go for it and go full time on it and see what happened. So I gave up the career that I'd you know, worked all my life to be a director and manage people and, 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 and work in that sort of sales environment to basically start again. But I thought if I give everything to this and I believe as strongly as I do about it, then everybody will benefit, not just Adam Walker. So that's what went and it went from sort of six camps to 25 camps a year. And, and that's how it was created. But, you know, I get such great pleasure. I meet so many different people from such walks of life and some, you know, with injuries, some are written off by doctors and they, they come to me. So it's very, very fulfilling. And, and you mentioned about the swim camps there. I mean, I've been, I, I've been, I came to Malta, didn't I? I came to, um, is Malta known as the ultimate endurance camp i think it is isn't it yeah there's different yeah. levels of camps i mean malta has been the one i think we've done 12 camps now uh, in malta so from 2013 we've uh yeah it'll be at least 12 because we're doing two a year so it might even be 14 and that was was one that i set up for long distance swimmers, channel swimmers, people who are doing events like 10 miles, 10K, looking to get the confidence. So one thing is the technique aspect to it, but the other thing is also um, giving you that mental confidence, talking about the psychology, which I've learned a lot about myself, which, which I share. And we have a nutritionist who's the uh, nutritionist for the Olympic uh, swim team as well. Uh, and the government uh, so she's a top we're really lucky to have her so we cover a lot of different things there and that is seen as the the sort of long distance ultimate camp yes yeah, it's, the, it's the really tough one where you've got the temperature similar to the channel and you've you've got to swim three hours on on day two and then um you know you have a couple of days later you have six hours so it really tests people and some haven't done long distance like that so so that is seen as, yeah, that, that's the real toughie where I say, come on, let's just do a few more hours. You're not feeling that bad. Yeah, I that. Whereas <laughs> I have Turkey where it's a bit warmer, 23 degrees. We're, I'm a bit more relaxed. And then Maldives, which is 29 degrees, which is just each of them learning the technique, mm -hmm. but they have different challenges as a result, different objectives. Yeah, I had a, I had a, one of the reasons to do this video is I had a brilliant time on the Malta camp. You know, I got much more out of it than um, than than just swimming. Um, the swimming was a, a massive achievement, but you know, I made friends. It was fun. Um, the schedule was a bit grueling, and um, I was bothered. But actually, um, it was the breakthrough moment for me because. Um, 
I got to, I think I got to about um, three hours and three and a half hours or something and you came to give me a feed and I was like, and then you were like, okay, you're doing it now, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. And then that was it. I was, I was in for six hours and, you know, that out of everything, when I think about my swimming and what swims I've done or, you know, where I've been with my swimming, that is totally my breakthrough moment. It really, it made me brave and confident and it, it was just my best moment. It was brilliant. So... Yeah, I, I think you became, you know, uh, definitely a more confident person as a result of that. And you can probably relate to outside of swimming that, you know, doing something like that, swimming six hours in water, not as warm as we would like, can give you that boost in other areas because then you start to believe, well, what else can I do? And that, that can affect uh, other areas. I mean, certainly that camp, like you say, is, uh, you know, I, I, I try and give my sort of heart and soul of those five days and it's it is intense it's meant to be intense in terms of in a positive way because we, we're giving you a lot of information regarding technique distance work psychology nutrition and all those things into those five days but once you do that and once you have those five days and it seem always seems some people it seems to go quickly because we're doing lots of stuff but they always find themselves, I think, on that camp and they, they start to realise, actually, maybe I am capable of doing something like the English Channel or, or One Length Windermere. And it, and it seems to be the sort of catalyst for the confidence. And that's what that camp was meant to be. It's meant to be those turning points where, like you say, when you came in three and a half hours and my job is to keep people going because I know when they do the six hours, what that will give them. They'll then think they're indestructible. But like everybody, including myself, I've had many moments um, training, particularly at the start, where you've got that 50-50, where your brain is saying, well, have I had enough and I would feel nicer being warm on the side versus, well, if I can keep going for this short amount of time, what will this give me? And then you'll get that massive boost. And, you know, a, a lot of, we have a high percentage of people who will do those six hours, probably because, they're sick of hearing me say keep going and they don't want to disappoint me or disappoint themselves but you know I get quite involved in that and, and, and emotional for that person because I know it's not just six hours no. so other people don't swim it's like well you're six six hours why does it matter you can get out not when you're the swimmer not when you've got goals and even if you don't have those goals once you've done it I bet you will do because then you'll go oh I can swim six hours what else can I do yeah. So it is, it's a really great camp. And I think, like you say, Helen, because people are going, people appreciate each other, what they're going through out there. So they form these strong bonds. Absolutely. And then outside of that, they then form relays together, you know, friendships together. And, you know, we're very proud that we can help facilitate that. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing to be involved in. Yeah, I've made some. I made some great friends on that camp that I've stayed friends with, and we've we're planning other other trips and you know other challenges, and and I'm really grateful for that. Um, I mean, you are very good at convincing. Um, you are very good at convincing people and being encouraging, and you're very positive with a positive mindset. You know, when we when you've coached me, sometimes I do a bit of moaning, don't I, and a bit of face pulling, and actually, yeah, eventually, <laughs> eventually, yeah. you don't take me on board, and and actually. You're really quite encouraging and so I don't think I know very many other people that are as good at it as you are actually. Oh that's that's very kind. I think it's just that you know I choose what I want to um, take from it so the negatives I think no it's not negative. I, I try and see the the potential in that person so you know I'm not seeing somebody when you're saying to me oh I don't really like this I'm thinking well most people swimming in 15 degrees don't like it but I'm more interested in what you want to achieve what you want to get out of it and why you're there and I know you're there because you want to push yourself you want to see what how capable and I know how great you'll feel at the end of it so you're always going to get those bits in between to yeah. different levels where people aren't very happy want to you know say this is rubbish Adam and I go yeah, no, should we carry on? It is, you know, what it is uh, sort of thing. And, and you know, I, I, as I say, I've done it in the past where I've gone, um, th this is really rubbish. Yeah, it's really rubbish, isn't it, Adam? Yeah, I don't feel great, but you're going to carry on, aren't you? Yes, you are. And then you do it for that feeling when you get out and how great it's. So, you know, the fact that I've been there many times with it and I can sense it, but my uh, goal is, you know, as a coach, 
Yeah. At the end of the day, I could say, oh, go out if you're not, but, but I know what people want to get out of themselves. And I feel it's my job to really stretch that. And if there's 99% that wants to get out, but there's 1% that wants to stay in to achieve that goal, then it's my job to make that 1%, 2%, and then hopefully 51%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very positive and encouraging. Brilliant. The, the, how many times a year do the swim camps happen? Do, they, do any swim camps happen in the UK? Yeah, so we, we do one-day camps in the pool mm. um, throughout the year. And moving forwards this year, we're going to be doing two days, uh, five-day camps as well. So we're going to be the long ones. So watch this space for them. That's what's going to happen. So there's going to be more uh, longer ones in the UK. Yep. And the great thing about the UK is it's it's cooler, so it's good training for the English Channel. So those one, ones are great. And and uh, I've got good access. I'm going to have access to uh, pool, lake and ocean. So that's going to give, so as I say, watch the space for that. Um, every year I go to Turkey. It tends to be May and October. Obviously, COVID has thrown it a little bit. And and there's Malta. So really what, what tends to happen is every March, there is two five-day camps, so two weeks of Malta. Then in May, there is Turkey. And then July um, tends to be the Maldives. And then we sometimes go back in October, Maldives and Turkey again. But um, but also America, I do. I kind of, I'm trying to sort of spread the word about the technique because I'm so passionate at how many people it's helped, people with disabilities and rehabilitation, as well as professionals um, and, and top athletes so I, I just really think when people give this technique a go they'll see how much easier it is to swim and see how beneficial it is for the body to swim long term I'm on this mission to really kind of get to as many people as I can so I'm always open if there is a club or a group that says we've there's 10 of us will you come to us and yeah. we can have those conversations. And, and so the, the stroke particularly um, is good in terms of uh, injury free. You, you know, it, yeah. it reduces your impact on your shoulders. And um, actually, I spoke to somebody the other day and we were speaking about swim camps and, and swimming. And he said to me, I really want to do the Adam Walker um, swim camp. He said, have you seen that guy swim? It just is so graceful. It just looks totally beautiful and really efficient. And I said, yeah, no, I've seen him swim. <laughs> He's really efficient, you know. Um, it, it's it, a lot of people do say that about your stroke and when when you see clips on youtube or whatever it, it just looks it looks effortless actually but of course it isn't to learn it but you know it's um it looks well the, i think the thing is like as you probably know you know quite quickly you can get a lot of fundamentals to swim better straight away yeah, yeah. and then what it's all about then, like anything in life, is you try and improve bit by bit by bit. And for myself, who created it, you know, I have to work on things and I want to time things up and, and that's it. You can't be complacent about it. So I, I think what I found from the conventional way of swimming, uh, of, of teaching, that sort of flat body position, the gains um, weren't anything like as great. You know, you can get someone to um, speed up their cadence, their arm speed, you can get them fitter and naturally going to be faster because they're fitter. Or you can get them to do little adjustments of the hands. And mm -hmm. But those are small adjustments for it, for the gains, where this is a, a, a not in a scary way, but a complete rebuild in terms of, you know, swimming side to side and, and, and getting that efficiency. And the whole thing is it's efficient because when you rotate 180 degrees, like that spiral motion, almost like a dolphin would do, um, it creates this momentum. And then when you pull onto that momentum, you create, create glide. A little bit like um, a, a shot putter or a hammer throw or discus, throw, they wind round and they release, almost like this sort of um, spring or catapult. Yes. Uh, and, like, and that's what the, like a momentum, like it builds a momentum. Yeah, it's the momentum that creates the glide every time. Yeah. And the benefits being that every time you glide, let's say one and a half, two meters, and you're saving two strokes in between, well, that's energy saved. Because what sometimes people don't understand is they say, oh, well, I do 80 strokes a minute and I'm okay with that. And we're not saying that you're not necessarily okay, but if you can do 50 strokes for that same speed, so you say 30 strokes per minute and you times that over an hour and you times that over 10 hours, I mean, people are coming back to me saving 12, 14,000 strokes. I mean, that's huge in terms of the effort. 
and that gives you a real good mental boost. So it's it's like anything, um, going through the foundations of it and, and being structured with yourself is worth the reward. But there's nothing in life that isn't worth, worth you, you have to work for it in order to get that big gain. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I look at myself swim now and I think how I used to swim in 2007 and it doesn't feel that long ago. I had a shocking stroke. You know, I had a lifeguard on two separate occasions said, um, the person next to you is complaining because you're splashing them and they're not enjoying the swim. And that was like within two weeks of each other. And I thought, hang on, my power and smashing the water, isn't that great? And I was doing 70 odd strokes a minute. Well, now I pride myself on the opposite. Every time I put my hand in, I put it in super slow motion, make sure there's no splash under the elbow, make sure the hands are in the right place, my head's still, I'm really relaxed, all these things. But they come through practice and repetition understanding but i've got the benefit and i see it as a benefit of being really injured so because of being really injured in my shoulders my body doesn't allow me to do this overhead action or this kind of zipping up action which we've been taught you know pressure on the shoulder and it, it doesn't allow it now some people it might allow it and and that's that's fine and might say well i don't need to change that my concern is when you get 30, 40, 50, 60, and as the shoulder tightens up, is it gonna allow you to do it? So preventative. Unfortunately, we, we live in a world where sometimes people will come to me when they're already injured and go, what do I do? Well, I'll go and see Adam Walker, whereas they could work at it when they're not injured. Um, but yeah, I, I see, still see how I used to swim. And if I can change, having done three quarters of my life or more swimming one way, to then this stroke that, like you say, very kindly said, you know, people look at it and think it's really efficient and, and nice. But there's been no other sport where I can say I had a lot of finesse. And this is why it makes me laugh, because people see me as this swimmer. Mm. And that was just practice. That was just changing the way I thought about something. And I think sometimes people say, oh, well, that's Adam Walker. And, you know, he was born in the ocean. He was born to swim that way. You know, it's a load of rubbish. I had to work and really think. And, and want to, that's the, that's the key. If you really want to change, really want to be more efficient and faster and swim long-term, then it's a small price to pay of learning um, some sessions and instantly. And I always find if someone comes on one camp or one lesson, they then get the bug for it. It's just making that step. Yeah, and when, and when you do your drills in the pool and you sort of get it, of course you don't get it, you know, um, fully, when you sort of get it, the feeling is, you know, you, you really feel like you've achieved something and I, you know, I was very pleased with myself and I've got these little notes on the side of the pool that are laminated, you know, that, um, that tell me about the drills and what I'm meant to be doing. But when you achieve that, I think to myself, okay, I'm going to leave it there now because, you know, I've really nearly got you know the foot flick or I really nearly got uh, and it's just a great feeling to feel that you're and more I think, efficient. I think the thing is knowing you Helen you know you, you're always going to say I've nearly got or you know obviously I'm not perfect and, and that that's your that, that's sort of doing yourself a disservice I remember how you swam before and how much better it is now and how and that's proof how much longer you swim the fact that you don't feel your shoulders you know the first thing that happens with this is people go well I don't feel like I'm doing anything it feels really effortless and I don't feel my shoulder and that's great that's the first thing that happens so they get really buzzed up I've, I've changed this I can swim forever then of course they want to be faster that's the next step because whenever you get something good that happens you celebrate about it and then you almost well how do I get better again yeah. um and it's like I say it's a process so um, and people learn at different levels, but the fact you've had these sessions, how much you've improved, and it's very easy to forget how you used to swim before. Yeah. You see yourself now, and you probably compare against what I'm doing when I've done it for years, and go, "Well, I haven't quite got it because I don't swim quite like Adam Walker." But then, you know, Adam Walker's been doing it, you know, more years than you. So sticking to it how I've done it why can't you be there's there's nothing that I possess that's different to you it's just a learning thing and practice yeah. but I, I find with a lot of people it's just a confidence thing getting that boost and think ah there's something in this and then moving into it but you know it's I always say that Einstein thing definition of insanity people want to improve but sometimes they don't want to commit to stuff and if you do the same thing over and over again you know, you can't expect different results. You're going to have to, at some point, 
try and learn. And if you can learn from someone who's been there and done it, and it doesn't have to be me, you know, I know we're talking about my camps, but actually really focusing on something that you believe in and, and, and keep going at it, then you are going to improve. Certainly it's, it's an easy system. You just train yourself, you work at it, work at it and you improve. Yeah, practice makes that. improvement. That's a very simple way to put it. Very good and very effective, yeah. If people want to find out about the swim camps, is there any spaces? Are they happening this year? Is Malta happening this year? Malta, there's... Yeah. There, there's the finish. Yeah, there is, yeah. So from sort of mid-November, there's two five-day camps, two separate ones. There are some spots still available. If you people want to go to oceanwalkeruk.com, mm -hmm. And they can also email us, which is info at oceanwalkeruk.com if they've got any questions. But it's on the website. Um, you just put in Ocean Walker Malta five day camp, you'll find it. So that's available in November. If, if people want to really treat themselves as the Maldives in December, which is absolutely incredible in terms of 29 degree water, and it's wow. just it's the Maldives, you can imagine. But both are learning the technique. One is for long distance and a bit more extreme with the temperature learning about psychology of the mind, what to focus on, how to overcome the demons, getting that nutritional support as well. Um, so there's that side. And, and then as I say Maldives, we, we learn the technique and then, you know, we go off and we have a swim with sharks, non dangerous sharks, reef sharks. Um, and then we have a barbecue on the beach and we do lots of cool stuff. So, there's a couple of different options there. But if people want a one-to-one -one lesson, you know, I'm I'm going to be open from May so they can book a lesson. Uh, again, email us and uh, they can have that personal lesson or with groups of two or three. So there's lots of different options. And if people um, are in a different country, they can do a lesson via Skype as well, which is sending me videos. So there's lots of different range to learn it. There's no real excuse not to learn it because there's it, it's there. There's lots of different options and, and there's more budget options as well as, uh, you know, I have a, um, a an online Vimeo, Ocean Walker Vimeo, which there's a lot of videos you can download and follow. And that's um, that's a more budget option as well to learn it. So I'm trying to kind of reach as many people as I can with it because massively believe in it and 100 percent. It will really, really help you. Absolutely. Uh, definitely changed, definitely changed my life in terms of what I have um, felt brave enough to do and um, uh, and definitely um, improved my enjoyment of, of, of being in the water with the positive mindset and stuff. It's, it's been a total game changer for me. No, that's great. That, that's, you know, that's the reason I do it, Helen. And, and, you know, that's this strokes in my blood, as you know, yeah. um, swimming's in my blood. You know, I know, I know I always say to you and I, it's a business, but it's, I'm leading with the heart of, of being able to help people because that's what I massively believe in. And I think uh, as I go get older and I can look back and say, all these people enjoyed doing swimming as a result of swimming this way. And, and it helped them because they had injury or whatever that reason is. And again, it's not just injury. We've talked a lot about injuries of, you know, of, coach um, four people um, who qualify for the world championships, triathlon and Ironman and got massive PB. So it is for speed as well. That's really important. Um, so I will put the links below uh, in terms of what you've just spoken about, uh, the camps and, you know, your your website and stuff. I will put the links in the description of this uh, video. Um, but before you go, before we finish, I, I just was wondering what is, when you, when you did the Ocean 7, which one was um, the most challenging swim and what was your thought process in terms of overcoming that you know was there a point where you just thought this is just gonna finish me off sort of thing or um i just wondered... I had a few few moments where i thought it might finish me off but it didn't stop me um joint the the, the two ones that really stand out is hawaii which is the molokai channel molokai to oahu and it was 60 kilometers in the end. It should be um, 45, but I had to swim another 15 kilometers sideways against the, uh, uh, the tide. Uh, I was stung by a Portuguese man of war after 13 hours, pulled tentacles off my stomach, lost feeling in my spine, was very, very sick. Uh, swam three and a half hours in, in a lot of pain with that to finish that. So nothing, I can't say anything was worse than that, but joint for a different reason was japan which is the sagaru channel 18 miles on paper but you've got the strongest um currents in the world they cross each other so it's very different to the english channel where 
tides can change every six hours, but they, it just can can affect you at any given moment. Waves were absolutely huge. I was really getting battered by the waves and it took me 15 and a half hours, but I had to sprint a lot of the way. I kept getting told to sprint by the pilot just to beat the, uh, the, the, the tide. Um, and that was just took everything out of me. I think my heart rate was going about 185 for about 11 hours. And I was just, you know, like a, I describe it as a boxer being hit over and over again. And, and I remember just kind of looking at the waves, like grabbing some air for hours on end and, but not panicking about it. I feel very comfortable in the ocean, but it was one of those moments that, you know, just keep going, keep going. And, and, and with me, always the fear of not making the swim uh, was much bigger than, than actually ever feeling tired or ever feeling in trouble. Never felt that. I was always just concerned that the pilots would take me out or they would finish the swim because you have to get yourself in that frame of mind when you do something like a channel, which is, you know, whatever happens, I'm going to make it. And, and of course, people are there to make sure you're safe. But as a swimmer, you're trying to get focused on the job in hand, which is one arm in front of the other. Whatever happens, you're going to get to the other side. And it's short term discomfort. You're only a matter of hours or maybe a day, but think of it as hours for something that can be never taken away from you. And, and I always say to people, seven days of discomfort changed my life. If I say to anybody, you can have everything you want, you can have the job you want, your dream job, you can be happier than you ever thought you could be, but you've got to go through discomfort for seven days. Would you take it? Yes, I would take it. Yes. Okay, I'm glad you answered that. <laughs> I would take it. Yes. Yeah. Sounds. Yeah. Sounds good like that. Put like that. Absolutely. Well, that's about all I wanted to ask, really, in terms of swim camp and coaching and stuff. Um, is there anything else that you want to add before we finish at all? Just uh, if people want to read the story about Ocean Seven, then I've got a book called Man Versus Ocean, which again, you know, is on OceanWalkerUK.com and and you know, I'm happy to sign and do a personal message. So if, if people want to have a read and, and it's a very honest um, read, it's not very much about everything was easy and I cruised through it very much not like that, but finding a way to get through all these different obstacles and, uh, and achieve my dream. And whether you are a swimmer or you're not, it doesn't really matter. The book is a metaphor for life. So it's all about overcoming stuff And it's all about the normal person, which is what I've always been. Nothing special about me, just something that I put my mind to and then achieved this goal, which meant that I could go on and live the life I wanted, which is to inspire others and make a difference. And, and in life, I think that's, you know, certainly what I want to do. What, what do we want to be remembered for? And what do we want to represent? And, and for me, it's making a difference to others. That's, that's always been the goal. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. So if you, um, if you like these videos, please can you subscribe on the link below. Um, we thank Adam Walker for joining us today because um, that's just been a great interview. Thank you very much. My absolute pleasure. Thank keep you. swimming, keep pushing yourselves, everybody out there. Thank you.